thank you so much, and welcome to Bells of the Cascades, A Burst of Light Holiday Concerts. It is such a pleasure to be back ringing here for such a large crowd. Thank you for spending a little bit of your time with us. Throughout the concert, if you hear things you like, let us know, cheer for us, whatever you would like. But we are so grateful to have you here and spending some of your time with us. The, the theme, A Burst of Light, came to me as I was kind of looking at various pieces and noticed a sort of a common thread between pieces. And so the start of the concert, we played Outburst, and then we played Fred Grayman's Lumiere. So literally starting the concert with A Burst of Light. And so I, as we were learning the piece, both pieces, I attributed the first one to almost that of a snowstorm with sort of intensity and swirling f formations with snow and everything, and then a much brighter, happier version of snow with Lumiere, which uh, hails from Fred Grayman, who's an incredible composer based out of uh, Paris, France. He's originally from here, but he lives and has been in Paris now for 50-ish years. Um, the next piece we're going to play is Kathy Mokobust's idyllic and gorgeous setting of A Little Town of Bethlehem. It is a staple in Christmas concerts and services, and Kathy's arrangement just features so many gorgeous moments where you feel like you're walking in a snowy field with gentle snowfall, and you'll hear very an original melody almost far away in the distance. And then later you'll hear the melody on the chimes, and then a more stately version of the melody. So I hope you enjoy Kathy Mokobust's A Little Town of Bethlehem.
If you looked at the program and looked at the next piece and went, I don't know what Volta means, that's entirely okay. That's my job to tell you. A Volta is not a car, but a dance. So Volta comes from Michael Pretorius's Dances from Terpsichore, which is a series um, and a suite of various types of dances. There is a pavan, a galliard, and Volta. And so Volta is just a dance. And I thought that fit the Holly and the Ivy tune very well. It's, Holly and the Ivy is very lighthearted and fun on its own. And so I figured putting these two together. And so as I was arranging it and was listening for various pieces, the Volta just kind of stuck in my head. So I needed to get it out of my head and onto paper. And so now I'm going to pass the torch on to you to get it stuck in your head. You'll hear the tune over and over and over throughout the piece. But it's just a delightful dance-like piece. So if you find yourself dancing, Good. <laughs>
if you're out of breath, so are we. <laughs> How many of you are familiar with the Morton Lawrenson Omanium Mysterium? A few hands. It is one of the most gorgeous choral standards ever written. And it has such a depth to it. It's one of those pieces that a couple of people have asked, oh, can you arrange it for bells? And it doesn't quite work. There's a certain atmosphere that Lauritsen's original composition has that doesn't quite translate to the instrument. However, however Kathy Mokobus felt that we need to have some sort of version of that text for the instrument. So she, she wrote her own version of the Omanu Mysterium. So I'm going to just read the English translation of the Latin text so you kind of understand a little bit of what the piece is sh sharing in it. O great mystery and wonderful sacrament, that animals should see the newborn Lord lying in a manger. Blessed is the virgin whose womb was worthy to bear the Lord Jesus Christ. Alleluia. This is written um, as a responsory chant for the matins for Christmas Day Mass, which is normally in a Catholic church. But throughout the piece, Kathy has the text over the bell part so people can kind of reflect on it. So you'll hear a very low sustained opening um, pattern that happens and then eventually more movement and it gets a little bit faster and more intense and then it gradually ends in just a really meditative reflective way and so I think I think this piece kind of falls along the similar lines of what I think will eventually be a handbell standard and so this is Omanium Mysterium.
The arranger of the next uh, piece we're going to play, Sandy Ethan, truly can do no wrong with what she writes. If she writes it, it's magical. And this arrangement is no different. So much so in that this is like the third or fourth time she's arranged a tune I do not like so well that I now want to do it. <laughs> do you hear what I hear is one of those tunes that I just, I'm not a huge fan of. It's really repetitive. It sounds kind of samey after a while. And it's one of those you kind of get the point after the first verse. Well, <laughs> Well, Sandy Ethan, when she received the commission from the Raleigh Ringers to arrange this, she goes, well, it's kind of repetitive, it's a little samey, and it kind of does the same thing over and over. So what she decided to do is she decided to do what's called text painting. And in music, that's where you take the characteristic of the words that are happening at that time and write the music around that. And so this version ends up being somewhat of a theme and variations on Do You Hear What I Hear? And so throughout the piece, you will hear, um, said the night wind to the little lamb. You'll hear flurries of notes indicating the wind throughout that. The music slows down a little bit, and it sounds almost like twinkling stars in the night sky. And you get, said the little lamb to the shepherd boy. And the owl voice, sounds, the, the bell melody sits more of an alto range, like a young tenor's voice. Then you get, said the shepherd boy to the mighty king, which becomes more robust, because you don't go up to a king and go, <laughs> more stately and prominent. And so you'll hear the music reflect that exact idea. And then the last verse sh uh, shifts into, said the mighty king to the people everywhere. And the key changes from C major to D major. And D major is usually considered the brightest key, and it's usually used for trumpet fanfares or declarations of some sort of announcement. And so it's a really brilliant but subtle trans, well, it's not subtle. It's, it goes into that key very strongly, but it's a musical nod to what that is. But she also combines it with, um, a Gregorian chant, which is also Latin, so at the end of the, the evening, there will be a Latin quiz for all of you to take <laughs> later. But the English translation is, creator of the stars of night, your people's everlasting light, O Christ redeemer of us all, we pray you hear us when we call. And so she, she has these brilliant ideas to combine different things. And so throughout the piece, you'll hear all these really cool musical combinations. And so I hope you enjoy Sandy Ethan's incredible Do You Hear What I Hear?
We have one more piece before we take a brief 10 minute intermission, and it is Alex Gebert's incredible arrangement of the Spanish Caro Rio Rio Chiu, which I'm going to read for you because it also has a translation, except the words Rio Rio Chiu have no translation, it's just that. But I'll read the rest of uh, part of the text. The riverbank is protected. God, God has kept the wolf from our ewe lamb. God has kept the wolf from our ewe lamb. The rabid wolf wanted to bite her, but Almighty God knew how to defend her. He willed to make her unable to sin, even original sin. This virgin did not have Ryu Ryu Chiu. It's an incredible arrangement, and coincidentally similar to Do You, he Do you Hear What I Hear, Alex felt that this melody, while extremely catchy, can also very easily get really repetitive. So he also wrote some variations, and then at one point he stopped and went, okay, I don't have any other ideas right now. I'll just write a four-part Bach fugue on Ryu Ryu Chu, and he threw that in the middle of it as well. So that's sn snuck in there. Um, Alex writes incredible works that are very different for the instrument, and this arrangement is no different. So we hope you enjoy Ryu Ryu Chu.
It's just fun. <laughs> the next piece we're going to play is my new arrangement of Sing We Now of Christmas, which, when you usually hear, ends up being a little bit bombastic and intense and goes really fast. And I wanted to do something a little different, which you'll see. Um, one of the staple Handel arrangements in the, in the Handel world is Kevin McChesney's arrangement of Sing We Now of Christmas, and it lasts about 80 seconds. And so you just blast through it. So most of the time, the piece is just full of life and full of energy, which Los Pese is the one we just played before that, 
obviously has. That one's arranged by a really good friend of mine, Brian Seaman, who he's in Virginia on the East Coast, and he has a number of really phenomenal arrangements, that being one of them, and one that we're going to play in the spring. Um, and speaking of our spring, if you look in your concert program, you'll find our future upcoming events. Uh, our, um, our spring concert series is From Sea to Sky, and sky with an E meaning Ireland. If you have seen the TV show Homelander, the theme song to that, the Skyboat song, is the inspiration for our spring theme. So you'll hear a wide range of pieces that feature various aspects following that idea. And we will be doing an arrangement of that that has a vocal duet and everything. So we're very excited about what's upcoming. So please do keep an eye out for venues, where we'll be playing. Um, we have the dates there and everything, so you'll be able to see when our, our, our concerts are. The other thing we have in our program is our donation sheet. We cannot ring without the instrument, and so having donations to help maintain the instrument and to grow, getting more bells is just vastly helpful. So if you are at all feeling generous and would like to help donate, we're looking to expand our set and grow and get more bells, and that just that takes some financial support. So if you're willing to help, we would absolutely appreciate it. And I hope you enjoy Simbi Now of Christmas.
Speaking of standards in the handbell literature, this next arrangement is one of those. It has been performed many, 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 many times over since its first performance, and it is Kevin McChesney's absolutely delightful and extremely fun uh, Symphonia on Heifertal, which has been used as a number of uh, under a number of two text names, and the, uh, this is the um, one that has, Kevin has here. Sorry, stumbling over words. The symphonia of Symphonia and Heifertal comes from the idea of symphonic, so like a symphony orchestra. You'll hear various parts, like the opening is this full flurry of the instruments, then you hear this flowing eighth note back and forth idea, and that's to imitate the woodwinds and, the, and um, brass. And then you hear a middle section, which sounds just plucked like strings, and then it builds to this big finale of a section where it is all the instruments, and in this case, all of the bells in a flurry of notes. You see extra things happening on this one. So I will get out of the way and be less distracting so you can enjoy Symphonia on a Heifertal arranged by Kevin McChesney.
One of the in incredible composers um, that is considered the pinnacle of musicality in the handbell world is William Payne. And when I approached him to, about this project I had to write a piece with me, I was really honored that he agreed to say yes. He is so vastly known in the handbell world. He's extremely, uh, as a director, he's extremely challenging. He expects so much from people. And his music is so complex in its characteristics, but it's approachable from a listener's standpoint. And so when I was working on this idea, this is the, this is the one movement of what will eventually be a larger seven movement work, all on the theme of light. And each one will be based on a different Latin text. And I'm going to compose each movement with a different composer. And so the project went on pause due to a unnamed obvious thing. Um, <laughs> and so eventually, the, the whole project will come to fruition. But this will be the final movement of it eventually. And so as we were pro putting together this program and we went on the theme of light, Lux Eterna, which translates to light eternal, seems like an obvious choice. And so I hope you enjoy Lux Eterna.
I have the absolute pleasure, week after week, coming and working with what can only be said as one of the most incredible group of people I've ever met. From a musical standpoint, you, you all can see, they're unreal. It's an incredible level of playing that the, everyone just brings such passion to. But they're just incredible people that bring so much joy to my life. Um, moments like that, just, I think it's what unites us as people. We have moments of connection that are just such, they create such a visceral response to life, to whatever is going on, and it just brings a sense of joy and love that you can't, you can't really put words to. I'm trying, but, um, so thank you all for everything. Every week. I'm crying before a piece that does not equal them. <laughs> but truly, it is just such an honor and a, and a joy and a privilege to be a part of something so incredible that uh, they push me to be a better person. My, my partner, Josh, is with that. And I see people here that I know from all sorts of different things, um, church, other handle things. Dutch Bros, my Dutch Bros baristas, they're here too. <laughs> like, it's little things like that that are just so cool. <laughs> so it's, it's just, music unites people in so many different ways, and just have so many of you here is incredible. So thank you for taking time out of your busy lives to spend just a little bit of time with us. We have one more piece for you this evening, and it is Kevin McChesney's eclectic arrangement of God Rest Our Merry Gentlemen, which if you know the tune, you don't you probably don't quite know it like this. You it's God Rest Our Merry Gentlemen and Kevin decided to take one beat out. Most music is in a normal meter of like three four, four four, sometimes five six. This one is in seven eight, so it feels like you're tripping over the melody just slightly. So if you want to sing along, good luck.
you all look like you want one more. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Oh, we do have one last one for you, and it's just a really fun arrangement of Good Christian Friends Rejoice, and it is, it has a sort of a Celtic Irish twist on it, so I hope you enjoy our encore. It'll take a couple seconds to um, set up, but while we're doing that, I want to thank Salmon Creek United Methodist for hosting us. Every year we come, and every year we have an incredible crowd, so thank you, thank you, thank you to Salmon Creek for hosting and for all of you for coming. Thank you to Liz, Tom, Faye, and Karen for being our ticket takers at the door. It is much appreciated. Most of what we do happens on a volunteer basis. All these ringers are volunteers who come after their very long day jobs and then spend th two and a half hours with me and deal with me on Tuesday nights. So everything we do just really happens for volunteers. And thank you to all of you for your time. Again, we hope that you have found something to enjoy about the evening and something that maybe you go home whistling or humming in 7-8 perhaps. <laughs> but thank you so much. If you have any questions, please feel free to come talk to us. If you want to check out the bells and chimes, just ask one of the ringers and we'd be happy to share. Um, we love what we do. We love sharing what we do. So feel free to come ask any questions. And we hope you have a wonderful rest of your holiday season. We look forward to seeing you in the spring. Have a good night.
Thank you all so much.